And we need to think about these warnings and these cautions and these these advices that we're getting and that we need to humble our hearts before God and call unto the Lord and ask for guidance for our salvation and for things that he has for us. And, you know, a lot of times the Holy Spirit does not speak to those that are not called. Right. He knows me. And so if this is happening to you, if, or you that are out there listening on the YouTube or wherever, if you're having these things happening to you when you're listening to uh, either the preaching or the teaching of God's Word or the reading of God's Word, be it known to you that God is dealing with you, be it known that the Holy Spirit is advising you and He is warning you because there is a hell to shun. Mm -hmm. And so this morning, as we read this, think upon these things as, as, as Paul was writing to the church when he said he... Uh, exhorted, exhorted them, and he says he exhorted them. Notice by the Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and that is that is the one that we need to be exhorted by. And so he says uh, that as ye have received of us, how ye ought to walk. Now notice over uh, in chapter two and verse twelve. Notice what he says here. Uh, uh, as ye would walk worthily of God who have called you unto his kingdom and glory. And so here again is one of the things that we need to keep in mind in our own self is that we walk worthily. That we walk in a way that would be pleasing to the Lord. And he said uh, here for this cause also thank we God without ceasing because when you receive the word of God, which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. And so with this, you, you, you see the importance, the importance of God's word. And you see the importance of the true Bible that God inspired men to write. Uh, and, and and some of these Bibles that so-called Bibles are are that have been changed have had words added and words taken away or changed the meanings. Listen, beware of these because he is saying here it's that we need to hear the word of God. And when a a word is changed, when a uh, a meaning is changed in in here in God's word, then listen, it's man's word. Right. And man's word will lead you astray. You're right. Whether or not, man's word will lead you astray. And so we see here then that he says, uh, so ye would would abound. Now if you if you exhort if you if you help to exhort someone, then there is something a reward there. And notice what he says here exhort you by the Lord Jesus that ye have received of us how you ought to walk and to please God so you would abound more and more. And this abound has the meaning of to have or possess in great quantities. Mm -hmm. Now, for saying the flesh wants to say here that see is a bank of money or a great worldly possession. But he's not talking about that. He is talking about the uh, the quality or the quantity of God's word that you understand and that you're able to help others with. Amen. And the, 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 the quantity of <coughs> the worldly things, God will supply that as you need it. But here he's talking about, uh, as, he, as he's talking that you would abound the more and more. And he says, to, and it, it is to be in a great plenty. This word abound means. And so what he what Paul is, is he is encouraging the church. He is encouraging the church to walk in a in a in a, in a godly manner and that they would be that and to exhort people and they would abound the more and more in God's word. Amen. And and, and it takes it takes time, it takes study, and it takes work, and it takes prayer, and it takes desires of, of, of the heart 
to abound because, listen, you don't pick up God's Word and read it through and say, hey, I've accomplished everything that He wants me to do. Listen, it's a daily, daily thing, and we know that. Mm -hmm. But listen, for those that don't know it, Listen, this is important that you get you a King James Version Bible Amen. and that you start studying it and that you read it not as a book, not as a, a thing that you've got to complete, but you study it chapter by chapter and you try to understand it and you try to get in church and you try to uh, uh, find you a true church and serve the Lord. And this is what this is what had happened here at the at, at the, the church of Thessalonica. They had they had gathered together and they were in unity. They were serving the Lord. And Paul is writing to them and saying, "Hey, I'm pleased with it. I, I just want to exhort you. I want to I want to warn you. I want to encourage you again." So he says, "Notice in uh, <clears throat> so ye would abound the more and more." Now I want to I want to read a, a, a verse here in John's gospel if you would just bear with me just a minute till i get there in john 15 and verse 12 notice what we, we, we want to read to you this is my commandment that you love one another as i have loved you now this abounding this exhorting uh, carries uh, it, it, it has to have that godly love towards one another and we need to much pray for one another uh, we don't we don't need to uh, skim the top and just say bless them bless them but listen as uh, it's been taught here at time again that we call one another's names to the to the Lord and present them to the Lord and, and ask them ask the Lord to bless them and to to, to help them because here it says here greater love has no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friend and people uh, you remember there was a man that laid down his life for you amen and he laid down his life for me and he gave it willingly and this is what he's saying greater love has it no man and we as uh, as as God's people need to remember this and as we walk a daily walk in this world we need to keep this in the center of our, our our mind and remember that Jesus Christ went to the cross of Calvary for our, our sins and he died for us Amen. and he shed his blood on the cross of Calvary uh, as an atonement for our sins he covered our sins and so uh, here again he says ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you Henceforth I call you not servants. And so listen, there's a greater thing than being a servant to the Lord. Notice what he says. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. So he is giving us the word here this morning. This is what jesus inspired john to write and he had heard it from the father the father t uh, told read, uh, said it to him and he said it to john and so we uh, we need to pay attention to what what we read in god's word and so he says notice now he says i have called you friends for all things that i've heard of my father i have about now i have made known unto you Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, ye may give it, he may give it to you. And so this is a promise, this is a the thing that, that Jesus has said to us, and if you're in our back in our lesson this morning, he says in verse two, notice, for you know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Paul was, was preaching, preaching the same, out of the same words that we're, we're reading today. And this was the thing that he was telling them. And he says here, for we you know what commandment we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification that you should abstain from fornication. 
Now, fornication, there's two types of fornication. There's a fleshly fornication and there's a spiritual fornication. And people this morning, so many, so many Christians, if they're not very careful, will get into this spiritual fornication mm -hmm. by worshiping things that they shouldn't worship. Right. And listen, I know the world is full of fleshly fornication, but listen, <clears throat> the, the spiritual fornication is a very dangerous situation Amen. because a person can be saved and he gets away from the Lord and he gets involved with this, uh, these things. And the first thing you know, he is in bad shape and the chastisement of the Lord is on him. And so Paul is writing to them here saying, abstain from idol worshiping, from worldly worship, from things of this nature. And, and we, put, we put God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit on the back burner. We say, well, we'll be back to you whenever we get our full. Listen, that's, that's what he's talking about here. So we, we put Jesus Christ in the first in our life. And we serve him as a, a Christian should. Amen. Now, <clears throat> in verse 4, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Now, again, these things are these things are worldly things uh, that you get involved with the world and have what it has to offer. And he here he here, here is warning. The brethren, he says, every one of you should know how to possess his vessel. His vessel being his fleshly body. Right. And we should know how to use it for his honor and for his glory. We should know how to keep it uh, under control. And we should know how to uh, conduct ourselves in a way that was pleasing to the Lord. Because, listen, this flesh needs guidance. This flesh is sinful. This flesh has a desire to sin. Right. And uh, we sometimes we don't want to think about that, but our flesh has a desire to sin. You're right. And so we have to we have to uh, put a hold on it. We have to keep it under control, and we have to uh, need be chastised our flesh, mm -hmm. and in order to keep it. In the right in the right condition so he says here how to possess possess his vessel in sanctification and honor not in the lust of conspicuousness even as the Gentiles which know not God so these are some of the things that he was, he was wanting uh, uh, us to understand and and here, in, in, I, I, I have to read this to you in the book of Acts, uh, Acts 27. We want to see something that, that Paul was, had warned them about in Acts, if I can get to it real quick. Acts 27, you remember when, when he, they were out on the ship, and uh, I'll get to it in a minute. It's, but they were, they had, they had, they wouldn't listen to what Paul had to say. But look in, in Acts 27 and verse 13. And this is some of the things that, that I, I want to refer to about keeping our bodies under subjection. But in verse chapter 27 and verse 13, it says, And when the south, and this is when they were on the ship, and when the south winds blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, Loose, loosing fence, they say, are supposed to creep. Now, this is a condition. This is a condition like that the uh, flesh thinks everything is all right. Mm -hmm. Everything is going smooth. Hey, I'll get out there and dabble a little bit. And that's, that's what happened. I've got everything under control, and I'll just get on the edge of it, and I'll, I'll, I'll just dabble. This is what happens. But in verse 14, but not long after there arose again in it a tempestuous wind called a, uh, I can't pronounce the word Eurocos done or something like that, but it was a, a great wind. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the, wind, into the wind, we let her drive and running under a certain island, which is called Claudia, we had much work to come to the boat. And so what has happened, everything was smooth, everything was fine, everything was pleasant. 
and they took this chance of going out into the sea. Now, in verse 17, which when they had taken up, they used help, unburdening the ship, and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksand, stake sail, and so were driven. And we being exceedingly tossed with a temperance, the next day they lighten the ship. Now, this is what comes from letting the flesh have its ease, letting the flesh get into something that it shouldn't get into. Right. It's a, it's a, it's a type of, and, and, and Paul, Paul, I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, when, when they, uh, in, in verse 10, he says, and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt mm -hmm. and much damage, not only of the laden and the ship, but also of our lives. Now, Paul warned them. Paul is warning the church of church of Thessalonica, don't you don't you get your bodies involved with something that you're not supposed to? Because listen, it will bring on problems right. that you don't need. And here we see here. Notice in here in uh, in verse 18 of, of Acts 27, and we being exceedingly tossed with a temperance, the next day they lighten the ship, and the third day we cast out with all our hands the tackle and the ship. Now, when we get in a condition like that, like Paul is warning, or when they got in this, hey, they felt everything they had away. They felt it out on, on the ship, out of the ship just to survive. Hey, it's the same. It's the same situation with us when we let these bodies do the things that they shouldn't do. Right. And so here again, and the, uh, in verse twenty, and when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, and all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. But after long absence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, "Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me." And not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this alarm and loss. And you say, well, you, you know, you're just reading a bunch of. Well, but listen, it's showing to us this morning that we need to listen to what God's Word says. Right. And we are warned Sunday, Wednesday of each week. We're warned by our pastor. And during the week, during the fill that in, we are warned of God's word in God's word if we'll study. Amen. And we can stay above something like this because they had lost everything. And and here he says in verse 22, and now I exhort you to be of good cheer for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, Amen. who I am, whose I am, and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. And so, here's the thing, here's the thing that I wanted to read this for. Listen, they made it. They made it. But listen, how did they make it? When they could have stayed back there, creed, and enjoyed the 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 comforts of that place and not had this shipwreck and had all this, but listen, they wouldn't listen. Mm -hmm. And to you that are listening out in the world, listen, you need to you need to be in a church. You need to hear the preaching of God's word. You need to be you need to be told what's going on with you because there are so many things out here that can hinder and there's, there's so many things that that this flesh likes to do, and it will, if it, if it has the opportunity, it will do it. And this is why this morning that I wanted to read this, but he said, be of good cheer. And I, this morning, can say this morning to all, everybody, be of good cheer. Amen. If, if, you, if, you, get, if you get shipwrecked, <laughs> if you get in something that you don't know you, you should be in, not in, listen, you turn to God. Amen. You, 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 you seek his leadership. You listen to what he has to say. You study your word. You and you do these things and listen. Uh, he is always there and he's he's saying to you, be a good cheer. And so back in our lesson, back in our, our lesson in First Thessalonians, again, 
in verse uh, 4, verse uh, 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 9, But as touching brother the love, ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. Amen. And indeed ye do it toward all the brethren, which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, or hear this word again, you, you brethren, that ye increase more and more. Study to show thyself approved is one of the scriptures that comes to my mind when I, I see this. And that's what we need to do. We need just to, to stay close to the Lord. In verse 11, and that ye study, there it is, to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you that you may walk honestly towards them that are without and that ye may have lack of nothing. So here again, that you may walk honestly towards them that are without. And I think this morning that the the the, the, the thing here that he's, he's encouraging to, listen, that you walk honestly towards others and, and that that you have the ability to tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That you are able, uh, and that you're honest about it, and if they say uh, anything about uh, works for salvation, if you can you can uh, advise them, uh, you can try to persuade them, and listen, you've done your duty. That's mm -hmm. what you're doing. And so he says, but I would, in verse 13, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. And we know this, these, these scriptures uh, encourage us when we uh, have a lost loved one that has professed to be saved. Don't worry about it. And that's what he's saying here. And, and he's telling the church, sir, but he says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus well, God bring with him. That's Amen. an encouragement this morning, people. That should be the greatest encouragement to you uh, of anything that you can uh, know. Because one day, this will all be over with. And one day, we'll go to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's going to raise this old body up. And he promised to do it. Now, notice in verse 15. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God. And the dead of Christ shall, shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Comfort one another with these words. So I think this morning that the, 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 what Paul had wrote to the church there, it was a comfort. It was it was an advice. It was a warning. And it, I, I think that any time that we study God's word and read his word, there is a warning. There is an advice. There is a thing that that will stir us in the right way. Amen. So this morning, I hope that it's been a blessing to you. Pray for the message, that uh, the words that I've read. Pray for... Uh, those that are listening to it out in the world, uh, uh, it might it might set some heart on far. It might stir it, it might stir something that we could not believe. Because listen, we have the greatest opportunity that we've ever ever had here at this church, and that is that we can tell the world of Jesus Christ. Amen. And and listen, that's that's one of the signs of the last of the last days is, is when the gospel is spread to all. All the world, and we're we're doing it this morning. Mm -hmm. We're telling we're telling people out there, hey, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ alone. Stick with the King James Version and serve the Lord. Amen. Thank you all for your attention. Mm -hmm.